Well, it's welded, it's cooled down. Um, I've been knocking the bugs and burrs off of the darn thing. I didn't put Protex on it this time, so it takes a little more cleaning up than usual, but oh well. Uh, anyway, when you fill that keyway, of course, you bend the shaft. So I've got to straighten it before I do anything else. And I have various tools out to knock bugs off. Uh, what do we do to straighten it? Over here, I've got a straightening bench. I built it years and years ago. And uh, it does it basically by pulling this block down. It's got four strain bars that travel through a plate. I'll get it back off and get a look at it. And of course then you've got this, these tools that go on it. You can make any size V's that you want. This is just 20 ton jack on this thing. But it, uh, it uh, pulls straight so you don't have the problems you do when you're trying to push things around with an H-frame. You can see the jack is sitting on a uh, bottom there and it's got the four strain bars that go up with tubes. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit and get a little uh, better idea. See those tubes? That plate, as soon as it starts to pull down on the bar, that plate comes up and locks. And then it's a straight pull from the top surface. They've both been machined. And it's a very efficient puller. It's not my idea. It's plagiarized from something I saw years ago in uh, grinder shops. Where if you get a lot of features on a shaft or something, then you go on a cylindrical grinder and it's got to be straight. And now you've ground it, got a lot of money in it, what do you do? Throw it away? No, you straighten it. And they would generally, instead of having a toolbar like her tool sitting on top of it, they would have a link with a hook that they could just flip out of the way and they could slide the and mine will too see the little wheels and that will slide the length of the frame because you don't always pull in the middle of a shaft sometimes you pull at the band or sometimes you it's kind of something you figure out after you've been at it for a while for instance I'll be pulling not in the center of where I welded but a little bit to the right of it if you notice where that's going to come up and uh, We'll get this all set up and put a shaft in it and uh, I'll bring the tenth indicator over there that sits on the other side. Um, well that's a thousandth indicator but I actually use a tenth indicator on a bearing diameter before I get done fooling with things. We'll be back here in a second. Okay we're about ready to uh, put a shaft in there. I've got my little uh, surface gauge with a tenth indicator and my other gauge set up there NBC I saw that on one of Keith Venter's vids and I put my white faced uh, Westhoff and Sterrett's away and I thought I could like that because it had its little needles so let's get to it back up a little bit and there we go just a little bit over here, I think we'll be all right. I got about a baker's dozen of these. Put some gloves on so I don't catch my hands on burrs. When you weld, sometimes that happens. Kick the chair around some more, Matt. This one's got some chewed up stuff, 45 millimeter diameter, 55 millimeter diameter, and this 55 millimeter diameter all need to be the same. My tool block is not in the center. It's not in the center between the V's, it's not in the center of this well. It's a little bit this way. With a pull down approach, the strain bars will pull and bow a little bit and it's not the same as if you're pushing and bowing the strain bars out on the side. 
so they couple up nicely. And if you get this adjusted right, press in the right place in this, and it's not always necessarily the center, uh, I'll get these two bearing diameters to match up. If you get a little off, then this one, I've got to make this one zero. Uh, this one can wiggle a little bit. It really doesn't make that much difference. And we'll just take a look here and find our low spot. Well, looky there. I'm coming up with about 16 thousandths bow in this poor fella. First thing I do is mark the shaft. 90 degrees. Two. and the key down is four. That's so I don't lose my place. And then I will turn this to where the bow is up. Right now I'm at, I think the bow is up with the key down. So this one pretty much worked out. Now I'm going to zoom in and turn another camera on and see if I can do some picture-in-picture picture stuff. And we can see here that I'm running about eight, 16 to 18 again. That was only for the... Uh, that's right there. We'll get to press. I'll reset my little fingers down here. 18, I think I'm going to need about 70. This is where local knowledge and help. 16th isn't going to be enough. Still isn't enough. We're going to go to 75. my pointer up. That's why I like these little tattletale things. I'm glad I bought one even though it was cheap. Still not enough. I don't think, but we're going to check. These don't always have to agree. Let's see what we get. This is a thousandth indicator, that's a tenth indicator. Nope, didn't get enough. I'm still Better than two wrong. That one also lets me get a little bit better on the high spot. Sometimes it kicks this way or that way. That's not fun. And I want 75 and I need two and a half. That's a stubborn little fellow. When you start getting tonnage on it, it'll all of a sudden go past where you want. I still don't think I have enough. Let's see. Maybe not. Nope, still need some more. About one. I went to 80. this guy back here. Find my high spot. Pretty much there. Well, the 
tenth indicator is saying I'm within about two or three tenths. And what I'm going to do is rough turn it. Now I must be on, oh, I see, I've got a, well, that's sweet. <laughs> I've got a little grind mark right there. Out freaking standing. Well, I'm within two tenths on this diameter and this diameter and the end diameter. So that'll work. Of the possibilities for straightening the shaft, the things I like best are pushing it around like this. Second best, pressing it around from the top. Third best, peening. And fourth best, heating and quenching. But any one of the combinations can, uh, can have you chasing yourself around for a while. These will get straightened multiple times. When they rough turn, I got to check them. When I grind them, I got to check them. And when I cut the key seat in them, they definitely bend then. They don't always bend in a rough turn. 